Over the years, I made several videos regarding so-called astronaut Don Pettit, basically the head of mockery when it comes to NASA. I find it very interesting what he says during this interview from a few months back. He basically states the technology to go back to the moon has been destroyed. He'd love to go back in a nanosecond, but that technology does not exist anymore. But then he goes on to talk about going to Mars. Okay, First off, before even showing this video clip with him speaking about Again, this technology, which I find very bizarre, saying it's been destroyed. How was it destroyed? He doesn't go into details how this so-called technology that they used to go to, to the moon years ago has been destroyed. Let's take a look first off, again, when it comes to mockery in this video clip. Basically, again, mocking his, his audience, his followers, during this presentation. Take a listen to what he says here. Astronauts are really, really good at making pictures in space that look like you've never left the planet. In fact, you, it's almost hard-pressed to tell whether you're in space or not in this picture. You know, we've got some fancy backdrops, I guess. What a strange person this is. You know, basically, again, if you follow my channel and see my previous videos on this so-called astronaut Don Pettit, of course, none of these men have been in space. They're nothing more than basically actors playing a role on the world stage, making the masses, the millions upon millions of people throughout the world believe they've been in space when they've never been in space at all. Now I'm going to play the video clip itself with Don Pettit again being interviewed. Just very bizarre interview. Not going into details how this so-called technology to go to the moon has been destroyed. And at the very end, I'll point out something very interesting what he says. People need to read between the lines. Take a listen. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. But going to Mars should be uh, one of the next series of steps that humans do. The first step should be going back to the moon for a number of technical uh, reasons and exploration reasons and then after that Mars maybe a uh, high orbit in uh, Venus atmosphere maybe going to Europa there's all kinds of uh, targets to go to places of interest in our solar system the the only limit to human future is in our own imaginations and with that goofy look on his face he says the only limit to human future is our own imagination so I find it very interesting. He's not saying it's based on technology, what's feasible based off technology. He says it's based on our imaginations. So it comes down to it, like I played this video clip I'll show in a second with William Shatner stating, science and science fiction are one and the same. There's no difference whatsoever. Take a listen. Um, my question is, through your career and your writing and your acting, you've inspired so many people to enter the sciences. How do you balance science with science fiction? They're both the same. The, the mystery of science fiction is what I'm talking about. Science and science fiction are essentially the same. Thank you very much. How do, how do you prove a black hole? How do you know those gravitational waves proved the collision of two black holes. Somehow, eventually, they are able to observe phenomena. No, they that... can't observe. <laughs> it's too far away. It's too theoretical. How do we know what they're saying is true? It, you know what it really is? It's all science fiction. <laughs> science and science fiction are essentially the same. Thank you very much.